Today we have with us Ms. Swati Jagdish, who is a famous parent coach, relationship coach. And there's so many things to be added to her profile. I would want Swati to give a small introduction of yours. What all do you do? Uh, because I am short of words okay. <laughs> explaining that. So I come from a mental health background. Okay. So I am a psychologist uh, who is into training and development. Right. So I don't do any one-on-one -on -one counseling or coaching. Uh, all I do is take workshops and training programs. Wow. So I deal with lactation because I was a lactation consultant for a few years. So breastfeeding classes, um, you know, pregnancy health related workshops, a okay. um, couple of adult sexuality related workshops that couples and women can attend. Uh, then uh, behavior psychology classes. And of course, my flagship program is the sex education workshop for parents, um, which I try to do offline. Okay. Uh, so I travel across different cities and uh, take classes to parents. Wow. So when we talk about parents, Swati, what do you think that, because this is a very common question we get, that at what age should we start sexuality education for kids? Yeah. So sexuality health education starts at six months itself, according to wow. me. <laughs> because that's the time when you start giving solids to the child. Mm. So when you give solid food to the child and a child understands what its body is communicating to it to indicate fullness or satiety, that's a beautiful moment to understand that its somatic intelligence has fully understood the concept of boundaries wow. and autonomy. That's true. So this much only I need. I'm done, Namma. Okay. But the problem is when parents are unaware of that, they want to make the child eat beyond its capacity. True. So when three times, four times a day, when there is a mealtime struggle at home and the parent is each time making the child eat beyond its capacity, the child loses connection with its body over a period of time. Thereby, the inability to understand what my body is trying to tell me. So when we go and ask an adult, okay, what does your body tell you? What is your inner voice telling you? What is your intuition telling you? What is your gut feel? And all they are not able to understand it because they have lost that connection, connection with, the body. Um, with the body. So concepts such as consent or boundaries or body autonomy can be understood at six months itself if the parent is aware of it. So there is nothing that you need to teach your child according to me. Yeah. They are inbuilt with all this information. The parent is aware of it, they will respect it in the child. When the child says, okay, Amma, I'm uncomfortable to sit with uh, guests. Yeah. The parent won't force the child to sing a song for the guests or dance for the guests, etc. Which is a very common scenario in Indian households. That's true. Where the child has to entertain all the guests. So, when parents get to know these simple things, they are able to incorporate these concepts in their day-to-day -day lives, in, in families, without even thinking that sex education is all about sex. So, yeah. there is consent, there is safety, there is online safety, uh, there is periods. So, how to uh, casually talk about these subjects. So, yeah, so this is what I deal with. Wow, I think this is such a wide topic and I also didn't know that it starts actually from the age of six months. Yeah. I always thought that it starts at the age of three or four years when we tell them what is safe and what is unsafe touch. But I think I also... No, but from age one itself, let's say you're talking to the child about um, eyes, nose, forehead, etc. Talking to them about private parts also can start at age one itself. Absolutely. No. So Absolutely. if you're if you're not um, uh, changing your expression when you talk about forehead or eyes or nose and shoulder, why should you change your expression when you talk about genitals? So that can also start as early as possible. So sex true. education will start the moment parents start talking to the child. Very true. Yeah. And I think I generally tell my uh, the parents who get in touch with me that how you know how do we educate our kids? I think the basic thing I tell them that you know. When you're watching TV with kids, don't change the channel if a kissing scene comes up or if a making out scene comes up because that gives the uh, signal to kids that mama is not uh, comfortable talking to me about uh, sex or about kissing or about relationships or about feelings. So I think that is one thing which I tell all of them that please don't do that. At least start, uh, try with this, start with this in at your house. So very great Swati. <coughs> Swati, as we know that uh, in India, we don't generally talk to kids about even puberty or hygiene in their private parts. So, what is the best way of uh, uh, teaching parents that uh, how should they talk to about uh, to their kids about personal hygiene and per changes in puberty and what effects do they have? In, uh, uh, I mean, emotional and uh, emotional and physical changes they have in their body while puberty. What effects do, uh, does it have on their life? So, basically how to educate, how to tell parents, how to start this conversation. Because a starter is very difficult. Yeah, yeah. So, um, the, the, the quickest analogy I'm getting is, uh, how do we make a parent talk about nutritional needs 
to a child mm-hmm. or how do we make a parent talk about food allergies to a child right or how to make a healthy plate or you know uh, a balanced plate so a parent will be able to talk about it if they know basics of nutrition if they know basics of okay what is carbs what is simple carbs and complex carbs how much protein do i need in a day what does this vegetable have what does this fruit have okay so if yeah. they know the basics of that nutrition if they know basics of okay what food items do we don't not, not consume as a uh, as a family or our culture doesn't allow us to consume certain foods or when they are aware of that or when they are aware of their own gut issues when they are aware about what is allergic to me etc they will pass on that knowledge to the children easily right so which so the, means sorry yeah. but which means that parents need to be educated first absolutely, before the kids absolutely there is nothing that the parent need to learn other than their own sexuality their own bodily needs their own body confidence and what level have they kept that we cannot imbibe body confidence and sexual confidence to a child when they see on a day to day basis that my parent yes. is least confident about their own body absolutely absolutely i think par- and these days kids are watching us at every moment and they are learning yeah. from us so yeah. we have to be very cautious we know we should first know and imbibe the things in ourselves yeah. before teaching it to our kids until 7 8 and all parents are the greatest people for them but afterwards they will start understanding the flaws in the parent also yeah which we also did in our parents because at till one point we were oh parents are so amazing right yeah. then it, then it, you know after 7 or 8 we were like oh they also lie yeah <laughs> they are also mm, they are also not too perfect yes they have issues right so if we are able to mold ourselves in such a way that um we are disciplined we are consistent we are body confident we have self esteem um then i think I the child will sure automatically get it absolutely yeah. and uh, swati because i think it is very important of course apart from teaching parents uh, introducing this to schools also and that is what we are also trying to do okay. you're trying this bit at your end where you're educating parents we are trying to educate teachers right. and we're also trying to educate kids oh. along with that okay so what do you think uh what age is appropriate to teach them about puberty the changes in puberty and how it affects their life and how not to compare themselves with their their peers so we see a lot of questions coming up that uh, uh i am uh, already 10 years old i haven't started with my periods my friend has is there something wrong with me a boy asking i am 13 years old i don't have any hair on my face but my friend has it is there something wrong with me mm. so what is the right age of telling them that, that everything is normal and everybody has their own pace of growing up okay i think puberty education can start from 11 12 onwards that's what i feel because again you know i am a big proponent of the parent itself talking about it uh, yeah. so maybe that's why but yeah in schools if something organized is happening that nothing better than that because parents are 100% every collecting every parent and educating them is not possible but going through schools is more organized in our country yeah at least school you now so many kids are educated at the same time so i think yeah 11 12 might be the right time right to talk age. about it again these you know self esteem issues pre teens teens are 100% going to have so constant reassurances are needed even if they go through a sex education content also even if the teachers are trained on all these things let's say there is a social issue that is happening a teacher can take the last 10 minutes in a class to talk about that yes okay or let's say somebody was bullied or shamed or whatever they can talk about okay you people you shouldn't bully and shame each other everybody's body is unique you should respect each other this yeah. that so any teacher even if they are not a sex education teacher if the teachers also get in a training for Absolutely. handling all these things absolutely every day a few minutes if somebody takes it up to discuss some subject no that alone is enough for kids i would say and kids would have a uh, you know kind of a a kind of a place to confide in yeah. that okay this teacher yeah. talks about it so i can go and talk we all it. had that teacher yeah. now so yeah. we felt very comfortable that's with true. it yeah yeah that's true. they will be there in every school actually just yes. have to identify them exactly yeah. exactly that is what we also try to help them with that you know you need to identify that that one adult in your mm-hmm. life it might be a good teacher yeah. it might be a teacher it might be one of your parents yeah. it might be an uncle or it might be an auntie who's very who whom you trust yeah. and you yeah. think that yes you understand so that is very true uh i think my last two question not taking much of your time swati one you talked about relation uh, one i would first uh, actually uh, would like to talk about consent and masturbation in teens so these days teens come up with lot of questions that mom if i have feel uh, i mean they talk to their teachers and teachers come up to us that how do we answer that that 
I have a feeling for a boy or the boy says I have a feeling for a girl mm. is that wrong right how do I handle that mm. Mm. I mean they don't want to do of course they they're not getting into a sexual act or anything but they just have feelings mm. but their parents think that it's wrong to have feelings mm. even some of the teachers think that it's wrong to have feelings mm. but how to tell kids that how to handle those feelings are they positive mm. are they negative how to tell them how to answer this question of kids yeah so um the biggest question is whose value systems are we trying to imbibe into these children right is it a teacher's value systems parents value systems or are we creating a different set of value systems to the child yeah all that an external party can do is give facts data <laughs> information science description about something mm. but value system mostly it comes within the family or if the teenager has other sources to build their value systems let's say movies and netflix series and you know uh, uh, seniors and uh, their peer group and social media and influencers and you know, people <laughs> like that then they will change the their value systems immediately so whatever they are taught with at home let's say their parents and teachers are against teenagers having relationships and they're like no you shouldn't girls and boys shouldn't talk to each other blah 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 and all that if netflix series uh, they were that they're watching in which all 15 year olds and 16 year olds are all dating each other and all that that will be probably the value system that they are going to get you know uh, because they're more comfortable yeah. with that they yeah, think yeah. that okay they, i mean i am having feelings and they are also doing it that there's something yeah, yeah. which is not wrong probably see they will it's not about the information according to me it's about how well they connect with somebody and how well they resonate with somebody yeah we are all you know uh, we are all we need that resonate see i need to connect with you know yeah. to actually listen to what this woman has to tell me i have to connect with you absolutely so if the adults around the teenagers or preteens if they can connect with those teenagers they will listen to them they will want to listen to them at least yes so me telling my child something how will i make sure that she is going to follow my value system i cannot make sure but what i can be sure of is are we a connected parent and child yes so at least my child will want to listen to me so when parents come for my classes first question i ask is does your child like you <laughs> wow forget about whether they will listen to you do they like you as a person do they like you yeah do they have the basic respect to you then you, nothing you say will be a gyan or advice or anything it will be just an opinion or suggestion or oh, this is some some information that i've got i'd like to share it with you please do your own. so when we are treating children or teenagers as autonomous beings they like it yes nobody wants to be lectured lectured yeah so yeah so i think we uh, need to give them respect that they also have a voice yes mutual respect yeah yeah, yeah. very true i think i have had uh, the best of the conversation around kids and understanding kids with you, thank you thank because you. you've been actually been with the parents so many of them across the country and thanks to you thanks to uh i would say educators like yourself who are actually working on the roots of this problem where we are educating kids at that age basically of course we are educating parents to educate their kids at that early age yeah. so that they actually come out as a responsible human being going forward thank you so much for the work that you are also doing because as i told you we cannot reach across to every parent out there but educating in schools educating children as you know a uh, masses yeah. group of children 100 200 children that is easier Yes. compared to the work that i'm doing where i get only like maximum 20 30 parents attend a workshop so yeah massive work that you are also doing thank you so much swati thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for all the work you're doing and you know educating the parents and kids thank, thank you, you. So